Mm -mm. There's no place like home. No place like home. No place like home. If you can't see it, I'm clicking together my ruby slippers here. As you know, I was away on vacation last week. I went to a magic convention, which was a lot of fun. And um, then I went to my brother's house, and last Sunday I was with his family at, at Mass, at their church down there in, a, uh, in um, Newport News, Virginia. And um, it was lovely seeing uh, his wife uh, cantered at Mass, and uh, his children were up in the choir, which was very nice. After Mass, um, my brother's sort of in charge of like the electronic stuff, so he was help wrapping up cords and stuff, and so I got involved in that a little bit. But as nice as it was to be with his family, it is so good to be back with my family, to be with you, and, and to be on this sacred ground, because truly there is no place, no place like here. And I'm glad to be back. Places have character qualities. The place described in our first reading today is Bethel. Now Bethel was the area where Abraham camped out on his first journey into Cana. And he would come back there to, to Bethel. Bethel is the, is the region, the area where Jacob would have his vision of angels ascending and descending from heaven to minister to him. Bethel is is the place where the Ark of the Covenant was brought. Eventually, David would triumphantly bring the Ark of the Covenant from Bethel up to the temple in, in Jerusalem. And so Bethel was a holy place. The name itself meant house of God. And that's what it was. It was the house of God. And yet Bethel fell on, on hard times. When the kingdom split in two between Israel, the northern tribes in the north and, and the southern tribes, Judah in the south, the line of division came right between Jerusalem and the town of Bethel, which is only 12 miles north of Jerusalem. And of course, Jerusalem would be the headquarters, the, the religious and political focal point of the, of the southern tribes, and Bethel would become the focal point of the northern tribes their holy place, and, and where their king resided. And yet we know that, that that king would bring in foreign gods. Hosea would say of Bethel that it was no longer the house of God, but he would describe it as the house of idols. All kinds of abominations were taking place in Bethel, and so God sends Amos to prophesy to the people of Bethel. He was a shepherd, a tender of sycamore trees. In other words, he was a layman. He was like you. The disciples that Jesus sends out in today's gospel passage are also at this point laymen. They were fishermen, tax collectors, ordinary people. No great college education, no great theological preparation, but rather they were ordinary folk. They were sent out, the 12 of them, in a way that is symbolic of the way the 12 tribes left Egypt in the first exile. You see, Moses convinced Pharaoh to let the people go and, and worship God, and so they left Egypt with not a second tunic, with no food, with no money in their belts. They, they left completely trusting in God's providence. And that's how Jesus sends the disciples in today's gospel passage. And they are sent on a very specific mission. It is a mission to change the world. They were going to be the instrument in which God changed everything in the world. They were be, being sent to bring healing and God's love to a people who felt abandoned, lost. 
They were sent out to preach the gospel. And they spoke a gospel of repentance. Although the word repentance that we have does not adequately translate the, the Greek word that Mark gives us in the gospel today. The actual word that Mark uses is not, not necessarily just repentance, but really a, a change in worldview, a complete turnaround in the way that the people saw reality. That's what the 12 were doing. They were being sent out to turn the world upside down, to bring light where there was darkness, to help those who were blind to see things in a whole new way, that God's kingdom was in their midst. And everything was new. When you think about it, it's almost laughable that these 12 are going to change everything. They had nothing. Think of the resources they have. They went out with without anything. And yet they, these laymen, were sent out to change everything. And so are you sent out to change everything. You have been destined from the foundation of the world to be God's children and to inaugurate in the world in which we live a kingdom God's reign in our midst, and that begins in here in our hearts. And we take that out to the world, nourished and sustained by the body and blood of Christ, and impelled by the Word of God. We are sent to evangelize, to change the world, to proclaim good news. Now, Amos experienced rejection. So did the 12. And Jesus gives them and gives us some advice, simple advice. If they don't accept you, if people reject you, if they offend you and make fun of you, if they mock you and tear you apart, leave that house. Leave that town and shake the dust from your feet and move on. Move on. In other words, let it go. Don't let it hold you back. Now, I don't know about you, but I know that there have been many times in my life when I had a little bit more than dust on my feet and haven't shaken it off. Most of us not only have a little dust on our feet, but we're towing around bags of dirt from the past. We have sacks of garbage that we're carrying with us. We're carrying too much baggage. It's interesting, the, the word baggage in, in the Latin is impediment. Something that holds us back. It's something that impedes our journey. Too much baggage keeps us from, from traveling the path that we are called to as children of God. We need to put those bags down to let the past go because God is counting on you. You are His hands and His feet. You are the ones that God is counting on to bring the good news to the world. And so we have to set down the garbage from the past. Those who have told us that we're not worthy of the work of God. Those who have told us that we won't amount to anything. Those who have belittled us or made fun of us. Those who have hurt our feelings, have attacked our families. We need to let it all go so that we may live in the freedom of God's children to do the work that we are called to, to bring good news that God's reign is in our midst. This command to shake the dust from our feet is not that different from the one that we receive from the Lord that we are to forgive as we have been forgiven. It's part of our journey. We say it every time we say the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We shake that dust from our feet. We leave that baggage behind and we continue the mission in the freedom of God's children. 
That's our calling. And it is a great calling. It is the calling of, of Amos, the calling of the Twelve, and the calling of the saints who have gone before us. And yes, they will reject you at times. They will insult you. They will persecute you. They will say ugly things. I know how difficult it is to be a Catholic in the world today. But they persecuted Jesus in the very same way. They insulted and they mocked our Lord in the very same way. So shake the dust from your feet. Lay down the garbage, the bags of dirt that you have been carrying and hold your heads up high. For today we receive Christ. And we are sent, not just in the name of the Lord, not just as ambassadors of Christ, but we are sent as the body of Christ in the world today. So hold your heads up high. The mission we are called to is great. Our destiny is great. We are the children of God. The rain has come upon us. And we bring that good news to the world.